In this tutorial, I'll guide you through the complete process of installing Ubuntu 24.04 LTS on any Android phone, and no root is required. What appears on my screen is a full Ubuntu desktop running directly on my Android phone. It uses my phone's CPU and RAM. GPU acceleration is not available, but the setup is still powerful enough for everyday Linux tasks such as browsing, coding, and file management. This installation includes the essential tools you expect from an XFCE desktop. For example, you get the Thunar file manager for handling files. I chose XFCE because it's lightweight and responsive on mobile hardware. It feels smoother than heavier desktops like GNOME. You can switch to GNOME later if you prefer. Open a terminal in the Ubuntu environment. Tap the keyboard icon to bring up the Android on-screen keyboard. At first, it may cover the entire display. Rotate your device to portrait. In portrait mode, the keyboard covers only part of the screen, which makes typing commands much easier. You can install almost any Linux tool or application here, just like on a regular PC. I installed Git with the apt package manager and it worked flawlessly. I also installed Firefox and the browsing experience is surprisingly smooth. You can install other applications such as LibreOffice for office work, GIMP for image editing, and Gini as a lightweight code editor. You now know what this setup can do and how it feels to use. Next, I'll guide you through each step to install it on your Android device. All commands are listed in the description for easy reference. Step 1. Install Termux and VNC Viewer First, install two applications on your Android device, Termux and VNC Viewer. Termux is a terminal emulator that provides a Linux command line on Android. VNC Viewer lets you access the Ubuntu desktop GUI once it's running. Download Termux from FDroid because the Play Store version may be outdated. The link will be in the video description. After installing Termux, install VNC Viewer from the Play Store. Open Termux and allow the permissions it requests. Step 2. Update Termux and install pROOT distro. With Termux ready, update the package lists and upgrade the installed packages. This step ensures everything is up to date. Now install an important tool called pROOT distro. This tool allows you to set up and run a complete Linux distribution on Android without needing root access. When prompted, type Y to confirm and Termux will complete the installation. Step 3. Install Ubuntu 24.04 via pROOT distro. Once pROOT distro is installed, use it to download and install Ubuntu. Several distributions are available, but the default is always the latest release. At this time, that is Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. Enter the command to begin the installation. The process may take a few minutes depending on your internet speed, so wait until it finishes downloading and configuring everything. When the setup is complete, Ubuntu is installed inside Termux. The next step is to log into your new Ubuntu environment. Step 4. Log into Ubuntu and update packages. To access your newly installed Ubuntu system, run the login command provided by pROOT distro. Once logged in, your Termux session will switch to an Ubuntu shell. The prompt will change to something like root at localhost. Now update Ubuntu's package lists so your system is fully up to date. At this point, you have successfully deployed Ubuntu inside Termux on your Android device. Right now, it runs only in a command line interface. The installation is minimal and does not include a graphical desktop GUI. Step 5. Set up Ubuntu Desktop, XFCE, and VNC Server The next step is to set up the XFCE desktop environment along with a VNC server. XFCE will provide the graphical interface, while the VNC server allows you to view and control that desktop remotely through the VNC Viewer app. Inside the Ubuntu shell, install XFCE along with some additional utilities. This process will download and install the XFCE desktop environment and a few useful applications. The download size is large, 
so let it complete without interruptions. During the installation, you will be asked to choose your country. Keep pressing enter to scroll through the list until you see all the options. For this demo, I'll select 35 for English US. Next, it will ask for a keyboard layout. I'll select option 1 which is English US. After that, install a VNC server. We'll use a lightweight VNC server called Tight VNC to host our Ubuntu desktop. Once installed, you now have everything you need. Ubuntu with XFCE and the VNC server ready to create a remote desktop session. Step 6. Configure VNC and XFCE startup. With the XFCE desktop and VNC server installed, we need to configure them before graphical interface can be used. Start by initializing the VNC server inside the Ubuntu shell. Since this is the first time you are running VNC, it will ask you to create a password. Choose one with at least 6 characters and press enter. You will then be asked to type the password again to confirm it. Once that is done, press enter once more. You may also be asked if you want to create a view only password. For this setup, we want full control, so type in. After that, the VNC server generates a default startup file. We need to edit this file so it launches the XFCE desktop when VNC starts. Open the file with the nano text editor. Clear its existing contents. Then, paste this script which will start XFCE. When finished, save the file. To do this in the nano, press Ctrl and X together. Then press Y to confirm the changes and finally hit enter. You will now be back in the Ubuntu shell. Next, make the startup file executable so the VNC server can run it. Enter this command to give it execute permissions. Next, we need to install a small helper program called dbus launch which XFCE relies on to manage its settings. With this package installed, your XFCE desktop will load correctly in VNC without any errors. Now, you need to restart the VNC server to apply the changes. First, stop the current instance with the kill command. Then start it again with the VNC server command. You can also add a resolution option when starting the server to better fit your device screen. Once the server starts, it will read the modified startup file and automatically launch an XFCE desktop session in the background. Step 7. Connect to Ubuntu desktop with VNC viewer. Now that the VNC server is running and the Ubuntu XFCE desktop is ready, the next step is to connect through the VNC viewer app. Press the home button to minimize termux and keep it running in the background. Do not close it completely as this will end the Ubuntu session. Open the VNC Viewer app that you installed earlier. Tap the plus button to start a new connection. For this address, type localhost 5901. You can also use 127.0.15901 which points to the same device. The number 5901 is the port used by the VNC server. For the connection name, Enter anything you like, such as Ubuntu. Save the connection and tap on connect. You will be asked for the VNC password you created earlier. Enter the password and tap connect. After a few seconds, the Ubuntu XFCE desktop will appear on your screen. You now have a full Ubuntu 24.04 desktop environment running on your Android phone. You can use it with touch controls and the on-screen keyboard or connect a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard for a better experience. To test everything, open the terminal inside Ubuntu and update the system. Once the update finishes, install Firefox.
launch it and you'll see it open inside your ubuntu desktop ready for browsing as a quick demo search for classic orange ubuntu wallpaper and download it Set the image as your background through the XFCE settings. This gives your setup the familiar look of Ubuntu on a regular PC. Keep in mind that Android power management may sometimes close Termux processes. To avoid this, disable battery optimization for Termux. On newer devices, you'll also find a developer option called Disable Child Process Restrictions. Turn this on so that Termux can create processes without being interrupted. When you are done using Ubuntu, stop the VNC server using the kill command. Then type exit to leave the Ubuntu session and return to the normal Termux prompt. The next time you want to use Ubuntu, open Termux and log into Ubuntu again. Then clean up old VNC files before starting a new VNC server. After that, start a fresh VNC server session and reconnect with the VNC viewer app. That concludes the tutorial on installing Ubuntu on an Android phone without root. If you followed along, you now carry a portable Linux desktop in your pocket. I hope this guide was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more Linux and tech tutorials.